I don't care. Like we need to figure out how to do this. So, um, then once we got started, then I backtracked. I was like, Whoa, (laughs) no, 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 no. I don't want to do this because you're always gone. You're always working. Like we, it's date night, right? Like we, he's all, I have appointments. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. Today, we got a, uh, I think, an exciting episode because we have our better halves with us here today, much better looking. Um, That's for sure. Yeah. 100%. And, yeah, definitely the ones that we would say, uh, I don't know if we'd say they wear the pants, but we're equals in that. Maybe you wear the pants, Lex. I sure so, don't. Yeah, well, it's equal. But uh, yeah, we're excited. So, Lexi and I, we've been married for 22 years almost, coming up on 22 years. How long have you guys been married for? Coming up on 15 years. 15 years. Holy cow. I know. So a little while. <laughs> and uh, both, so Lexi was 18 when we got married. You were 18. 19. You were 19 when you got mm-hmm. married. Okay. Just got married very young. Yep. Yeah. So we've all been uh, together. We've been married for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. And then we've also been in business together for many, many years. Yeah. And uh, just had a lot of cool experiences together, right? Yep. So it's been a lot of fun. So... Um, yeah, we just wanted to just, I think, talk today about whatever comes up as far as partnership. And uh, I think there's um, maybe a lot of people in the world today that uh, always want to get better in their partnerships or maybe find a good partnership or uh, have a good marriage. Or if they're struggling in their marriage, how can they make it better? I don't know that we have all the answers. I definitely don't have all the answers, but, you know, we've experienced some things that might help some people. Yeah, definitely. I think. Yeah, through our experiences, we've all yeah both been married for a long time and both had ups and downs and in, in life and careers and all that kind of stuff. I think definitely people can get value. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so um, we've had some exciting stuff going on in our life last uh, not I mean this just this last week actually. Lexi just got back from a little conference she went to in Dallas, Texas. Oh yeah, what, yes, what was I that did. about, Lex? Well, it was, I told you not to ask me direct questions. <laughs> That's a direct question. <laughs> I wanted them to start. Lexi's I want nervous to today about I direct know. questions. Um, I know, because I, no, it was exciting. I took our oldest daughter, she's 15, and I want her to have some good role models, right? We can have TikTokers be our role models, or we can have these Christian conservative men and women that are teaching good values and strong values. And so I took her to Dallas. She wanted to go to Hawaii. So I took her to Dallas and we um, stayed at a beautiful hotel and just had so much fun listening to speakers just teach us how to raise strong families, meet, um, look for the right kind of person you want to date and marry. They're talking to a lot of young women. I had to go with her because, first of all, I love it. And also because um, they need she needed an adult. So it's kind of geared towards 15 to 26 year olds that are in high school and college and um anyway so i went with her and we had an awesome time how cool so these guys put on an event for young kids to go to and and help them know what to look for in their spouses and stuff in the future how cool yes yep i mean it's a lot of christian conservative activism it was very political as well too and how to um raise that next generation up you know what's crazy to me is i i posted yesterday so i did this murph right yeah i'd heard about a murph (laughs) <laughs> um, Memorial Day. I don't know if yes. you guys have seen everybody was posting on my Instagram. I never even heard of it before. So oh, I'm that like, workout? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, shoot, let's, I'll try it. So I tried it that day with no, um, with no weighted vest. I just try it just the way it goes. So you like start with a mile and then you do a hundred pull-ups, 200, uh, push-ups and 300 air squats. And then you finish with a mile, right? And so I'm like, I'll just try it. I timed myself just randomly. I didn't think I could finish it when you first look at it. And so I looked at how people do it and they just break it up usually into like 20 sets of five, 10 and 15, uh, pull-ups, push-ups, air squats. So anyway, I did it, did it pretty quick, felt good. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try it a couple of days and wear a weighted vest. And then, but I think there should be like, why isn't there abs? I think there should be abs. We should add some sit-ups to it, you know? 
And so we add the sit-ups or whatever. So we do it and I post on social media about on Instagram. And then I say things about like, um, why it's important to me to be a, a Jesus loving man, working hard, providing for my family. No joke. I, the amount of, uh, activity on that post was 10% of a usual post. Yeah. My usual yeah, posts are about like money or success mm-hmm. or business. I got 10% of the activity and I know it's because I was talking about these core Christian values, how to be a strong man, how to raise a great family, how to have great children, how to work hard. Yeah, that's amazing. Very much so. You know that that's... Oh yeah, 100%. So it's, I mean, it's cool to me. I think we need more events like that for kids to go to and be raised in and realize, because a lot of people probably wouldn't realize that, oh my gosh, I post this one post about, you know, God, you know, loving your family and, you know, loving freedom and... And, and the truth they, is, that's what people really want to hear. They yeah. really do. Yes. That would get more activity if it was shown to more people. Yeah, they just suppress it. Yes. So it's unfortunate that that's happening in the world today. But how cool that there's an environment that you can take your children to and have a bunch of other great conservative Christians want to pour into our children good values. Yes. Yeah. But it's also unfortunate that those are probably suppressed. So a lot of people know about it because yeah. how do they promote it if these social media companies are suppressing that information, right? Yes. It was actually really cool to watch Jersey. Not super excited to go, right? This was me, obviously, like orchestrating this to happen. And then as we're there and she is meeting certain people, it just to watch her change. And I don't know if she'll be like dying to go again, but there's no doubt that that cemented some solid stuff in there for her. And like, she's starting to date and she's starting to, she's going to get her driver's license soon and Mm. be making these choices and being out. And really it was, I, I felt inspired to go. I did not know why it's like, I don't know what she's going to get. I knew she probably wouldn't have a great attitude about it. And then something as simple as her meeting, she loves dogs. She loves German shepherd. She always has. And I don't want a giant German Shepherd in my house, so I got her a Corgi. Um, and she loves that almost dog, too. Same. It's oh. almost the same. Super, <laughs> yeah. super, super close. Hey, she's a tough Corgi. Yeah. <laughs> she's fast. But she has this deep love for these animals. And some of the people there train these dogs. They train these German and Dutch Shepherds to go rescue young girls who have been um, abused by ISIS. And they, so she got to meet a dog that does that wow. and to just, I don't know. It was just pretty cool to make that connection with someone that now she's like, that's what I want to do. I that's want to do awesome. That my life. So I at that event she found, dogs. she's, it's already been like brewing in there. Right. Yeah. And now it's like, I, she could see that's something I could go do. I could train these dogs. She's always wanted one. Yeah. And now she thinks How I cool. could train one of these dogs and that's yeah. what I could do with my life and help people. So, so she came back like in the event. She was glad yes. she went. Yep. It yeah. was great. I think it's cool just to see uh, the opportunities that we have today, both of us do, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Having these type of experiences and going and doing that, you know, and, and kind of what the, the, the choices we made early in life that kind of led up to being able to do these types of things if we want to go do them. I mean, I like to go hunting so I can go hunting when I want. And she likes to go to these self-improvement, uh, which is awesome, empowerment um, type uh, deals. You guys went and sailed the world for about a year or whatever it was. Um, and we, we did certain things early in our lives to kind of set us up for that. So we probably should talk about how we did that and uh, some of the dynamics in our partnerships. What do you think? Yeah, I think yeah. it'd be great. I think, you know, as you as you say that stuff, though, I mean, it's cool because you have to be intentional as a parent to yes. want yeah. to put your children in an environment to help them grow, right? What is an environment you want to see your children grow in? You have to be intentional to to not only put them in the environment, also know what inspires your children, right? To be able to find things inside of that environment that can inspire. We always did that when people come into the business, we try to find someone similar to them to introduce them to, right? Mm -hmm. Just to make them feel comfortable in this new group. So, and then have the money and the time to be able to do this. It costs money to be able to go to an event like that, Mm -hmm. but also takes time. And then I think most importantly is to have that mindset of where people want to get better. So you understand that the time and the money into your children is an investment, right? It's not a cost. It's a, it's an investment that, and you're only able to make that investment though, because of the price we paid early on in life though, which is cool. Well, it's so true because the biggest thing for me was like, okay, can I find someone 
to watch my children because he's going to be gone. I really, I mean, other than, of course, you are aware of spending money, yeah. but it's not, that wasn't the determining factor of right. if we're going to go or not. So yeah. it's like, we want to go. Okay. I've got to figure out the other logistics of it, but I'm making this happen. This is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool to hear. I think more, more parents, I think inc- including us, I think it's a good thing that we can learn from is to just be intentional about the environment. I've talked to Kelsey all the time. I said, my, I believe that one of my most important jobs as a father is to control the environment that my children are raised in, right? That's my job is to give them an environment that they can thrive in, right? And to put up bumpers, you know, on e- e- either side of that environment, like, hey, with, within this range, have fun and learn and fall down and get up and all that kind of stuff. But it's my job to make sure that environment is safe for my children to be raised in. So back when you guys were 20, 21, 22 years old, were you thinking about your children back then? Uh, Good question. (laughs) I don't know. How about you, Kels? I think, yeah, I think we talked about it a lot. Um, The one thing we did think about was going into business. We didn't want to have kids for a long time. Um, because we wanted to be set up financially for our kids. So we wanted to have that out of the way. So when we raised our kids, we could do whatever we wanted. So I think we talked about that, but that's as far as... Yeah, I think most of it was the ability to have the flexibility and Mm -hmm. the options to raise our children how we want. Because I think one of the things we did understand, I think early on was... We knew that once you have children, your perspective would change. It's always those people, if you know, if... I would never let my kids do that. They don't have kids, right? And then they have kids and then their kids do that. You know, I thought you wouldn't let them do that. Well, it's a whole different ball game when you're a parent. And sure. I think we were wise enough to know that we knew nothing about having children. And so I think our biggest thing was, will we have the money and the time and the resources available to become the best parents that we could have once yeah. we had children. Yeah. yeah, I felt the same way. In fact, I think I felt that way to a fault, to a point where I never felt ready. Mm-hmm. I just kind of kept going, we're not ready yet. We're not, we're not set up enough yet. We're not ready. And that's and where like, I came in. Yeah. <laughs> and Lex is like, all right, we have kids. I'm like, I'm not, you know, well, maybe, but we're right. not quite there yet, you know? Right. See, and for me, the whole time we were building, that's all I was thinking about was like, I will do whatever I can so I can be home with my children. But yeah. that was like my driving, driving force to yeah. like delay gratification and put everything off because I was like, I want to have children. But that was just me. That was what was inside of me that I Yeah, I think wanted. it's fairly common. It seems, seems to me anyway. I mean, we've worked with a lot of couples and it seems a lot of the time the guy's not ready and the... the the wife is like, I, mean, I think the husband's <laughs> ready by the third child. Then the husband's yeah. ready. So I think it's fairly common. I mean, I, you know, so so we when we decided to really have kids, or you decided to first, and you're like, we're having kids, and then we couldn't, we like weren't able to get pregnant, and uh, so uh, started to kind of delve into that whole situation. Found out we needed to do the whole in vitro process. Found a really good doctor in Las Vegas. He's very well known. And uh, so not only was it hard to have kids as it was for us, but then we had to spend the, the time to mm-hmm. go back and forth to Vegas about every, what was it, once a I week? I had to go maybe. every other day for several weeks yeah. for blood. And, and I was not very supportive because I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And, and then to be ready to do all that too. It's like if you just have a child, that's one And it was expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it was. 20, 20 30, grand, 30 it was like grand. 13. 30, yeah. Okay, 13 grand. Felt like 30, right? <laughs> Well, yeah. with inflation, I guess now, te- yeah. technically, I mean, it, it's about 30 right now. Yeah. Yeah. And looking back on it, I go, man, I was such a jerk, but I just wasn't ready. Yeah. Right. You know? And, and, uh, I think Do you think that, maybe you were unsure, unsure or yeah. fear, you know, fear. Yeah. I'm not, we're, we're not, I mean, we're not set not, up good enough yet. When we have mm-hmm. kids, I want to be, and we totally were. I think but, that same fear is actually the exact same fear that stops anybody from doing anything that makes their life better. Right. Yeah. Right? True. It's like uh-huh. pressure. Yeah. yeah. I used to always tell people pressure is a privilege, mm-hmm. right? So when you feel that pressure on you, isn't that an opera? That's an opportunity where your life can get better. Right. For sure. And the choice you make at that moment will determine. But I think, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I wasn't ready so much as, I don't know. I don't know how to. <laughs> I was like, well, we, we got married. I'm, why didn't we talk about kids before we got married? We just didn't. Yeah. We got married and I was like, okay, we're ready to have kids. And he was like, I'm not having kids till I'm 30. <laughs> what, you're 21? I'm going, 30? <laughs> like, that's nine years. Yeah. And you're only going to have two. 
Yeah, only yeah, two. I wanted to have two kids. I wanted four. Yeah. He wanted two. So it was, and I just, I kept pushing it, but he was like, absolutely not. Shut it down. Um, so I kind of came to the realization that we weren't going to have kids till he was 30 and just accepted it. Um, what? We had our Did first. pretty good. I was 29 and a half. I was like, absolutely not. But looking back, I'm, I'm really glad that we did it that way, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think if we could have designed it, I mean, we almost designed it perfectly. Yeah. You know, we we got started in business young. We got married young. We built a business young. We got financially independent young. Mm-hmm. We traveled the world young. We got all that stuff out of our system. And then when we started having children, we had been together for a lot of years. We were super close. We had a great business. We had a lot of time. And so being able to take all the things we learned and pour it into our children, I think it was perfect. I yeah. Think. But yeah. If I was to do it all over again, I think I'd do it the same way. Heck, a lot of people probably go, man, that, that, that's like a dream, right? I mean, it's really good. And I think everybody's life is so different. I mean, right. you know, looking at um, like your childhood growing up, Jeff, people yeah. probably wouldn't want that childhood. Right. right. So that part of your life was a challenge. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? and, and Kelsey, I don't know, you're, you're, I don't know how your childhood was as, as much as Jeff's, but have an idea. But, you know. <laughs> wasn't raised in the hood. (laughs) I mean, I thought I had a great life, but you know, you look back and you go, Oh wait, what the heck? My family was definitely not like, I did not have your traditional family dynamic. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Everybody's surviving. And uh, so I think everybody's different out there. You know, some people, they go, I've already got three or four kids. Now I got to go build a business because I'm in a bad situation or I lost my business or I had to. So, um, you know, I think that, uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, you find ways to make that work for you. Right. Yeah. I think when you go to a situation like that, if you can just find a way, the, the goal is figure out what you want in life, regardless of where you're at and then find a path to get there. Yes. Right. I mean, so often people are saying, yeah, they'll, they'll hear like our story and go, Oh, well that didn't happen for me. So I guess. Yes. Or you, you did know. that cause you didn't have kids. Right. Yeah. How, That's a how, huge how one. We hear that. Right? Oh, all the time. You don't have kids you understand. And I was like, I don't understand how you have kids and not because when we had kids, that's when we really got crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As far as we really got serious and really got focused. Yeah, yeah. I think most people's businesses explode when they have kids, you know, but that's another thing too. Like when it comes to having a family, you'll hear people who haven't had a lot of success go, oh my gosh, kids are so hard. They take so much energy and effort and oh my gosh, I just, I don't know how you're going to do it all. Right. And, and then successful people would tell me, oh my gosh, kids are going to change your life. You're going to get bigger than ever. You're going to make more money than ever. And, and there's truth to both sides, right? The question Mm -hmm. is, who are you going to believe? And what happened to us is we believe the successful people, you know, that, that when we had children and our business did, we had the biggest months we've ever had in our career after we had children. Yeah. 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 We had a kind of a cool thing though, because we ended up doing in vitro Mm -hmm. But then um, it didn't take, and we actually had a very interesting, this doctor that was a world-renowned had no idea what even happened because they go to check and the embryos are, like, just not there. So um, with the in vitro, they, I don't know, we'd have to get into all of it, but obviously they implant two embryos, and either they take and you have babies or you miscarry, and I didn't neither, and he could not figure out what even happened. They disappeared. They disappeared. So they think they both detached and went into my fallopian tube, they don't know. They had no idea. Like I was still pregnant technically um, with the blood tests and then they did an ultrasound and there's no babies. And so I'm sitting on the table like, we just went through all of this and you know, you get nothing. And that's just what kind of what happens sometimes. So we came to a little bit of an odds because I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do this again. Like we know how to do it. We just did it. It was hard, but we know how to do it. And he's like, I'm never doing that again. Like, that was the worst thing we've ever done. And we, I'm like, we have six embryos. Let's just do it again. And he, so we kind of had this conversation. Now looking back, um, it was the best thing to do. He said, let's, let's pray about it. We'll wait. And if you aren't like pregnant naturally by the end of the year, then we'll, we'll do it again. And I found out on December 30th that I was pregnant with Jersey. Wow. So it was that crazy. So, so cool. definitely did not go the way that we planned at all, but it turned out even better. Yeah. Good That's job. awesome. <laughs> way to go, Lex. And then she came and she was perfect. I was either, <laughs> that was the end of the story. <laughs> It started a whole if bunch of other problems. Worked, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, 
Oh and, and that's, a, I think that's another misconception is everybody just looks at everybody else's story and thinks that everything in between is perfect or everything after that goal is perfect. Yeah. And it's just not right. Mm-hmm. Just not. I honestly think because I was like, I will do anything to have a child. Then I get a kid and she's like, okay, you'll do anything for me. And she was, she worked it horrible. Oh. <laughs> she was, such a, hard she was a challenging child. Kid. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you remember. Was, you I were, remember. Were you still our office manager when we were doing all that? Or was that she right, I was pregnant right with Jersey? Yeah, so we had just started because you guys were going through all because that. Because I was, was like, like I'm gonna be having a baby and we hired Jeff. Yep. So, okay. so and were, yeah, that's so right, he yeah. was there as that's I right. was like big pregnant with Jersey. Yeah. It actually helped me a lot because I've always been that person that um, I never thought there was anything wrong with making a lot of money, right? So mm-hmm. I always thought, like, hey, I grew up poor. I don't think there's anything wrong, wrong with being successful and getting rich. Right. Um, and so I was always that person. And I would talk about making money a lot, right? And people would say stuff like, oh, money isn't everything. And, you know, it would frustrate me. And that, But seeing you guys go through that situation, I realized if you didn't have money, then you wouldn't have been able to have children most likely, right? I mean, having the money and the time and the freedom. So for me at a young age, it really, I think it helped me a lot and helped me realize that, yeah, while money isn't everything, it gives you a ton of options and tools and it it, give, it puts you in position to be able to uh, make your life better. You know, so I think you, about you used that. To, used to talk, you used to give a talk and, and, and talk about you, Jersey. Yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. You always included that. I remember. Me, and then yeah. it would inspire me again. Yeah. Like I would kind of forget, honestly. Yeah. And when, every time look, you'd look say that, like, girl, that is everything. Right. Yeah, because people would say that, yes. right? Yeah, money doesn't, money doesn't, oh money gosh. isn't everything. We're all about that. But yeah, but I, yeah, I never forgot that if you guys hadn't made it a lot of money, that you would have been able to do that. And then seeing Jersey being born and you guys go through that whole situation, it, it really helped me a lot early on in business, but also in my life and my perspective about what's right, you know, mm-hmm. because it wasn't the money that it, it wasn't the money, it was the child, but without the money, really you wouldn't have been able to have the child, right. you know? And so to think about how hard that is in life to, to go through. And then there's some people right now that want to have children and they don't have the money to do that. And it's mm-hmm. like their life dream and their life goal. And so instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to make, and I'm going to create the life I want. They complain mm-hmm. and go, Oh man, rich people control the world or this sucks because I don't make a lot of money. Or then they start complaining mm-hmm. about it when it's, it's available for you to go make a lot of money yeah. and go do what you need to do. You just have to have the right perspective about it. Right. You got the right mm-hmm. perspective. I also think you need to be able to see a way to do it. I think, a, mm-hmm. a, I think the yeah. reason why a lot of people will say those things is because they don't know how to do it. Right. And so they go, I, they don't know how to do it. And so they think that, you have to get lucky or you have to have the right connections and those things can help. I mean, I, I mean, I'll take luck any day, but I also believe that you create your own luck. Right. right. And, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll admit it. I mean, if I, if I wasn't introduced to Primerica, um, you know, I mean, I did have some examples in real estate. My uncle's in real estate successful. I've got a cousin who's successful in construction and I was going to go probably one of those directions. So I, I was fortunate to have pathways that I could have, gone. But I think a lot of people, they grew up, their parents always had jobs. They've always had jobs and they can't get out of that mindset. How do I start a business? How do I do this? And that's what I think. I, I think, um, so they get, they almost get bitter, Yeah. you know, and, and there's very, I mean, t- today we have a ton of resources on people that are successful talking about them being successful, but very, very few people talk about exactly how to do, do it. it. Step right. one, here's what you do. You got to make this phone call. Here's what you say. Here's how you act. And when I got in Primerica, when I started listening to Hector Lamarck, that was his um, his whole his MO. philosophy, yeah. right? Was I'm going to teach you how, to, I'm not going to motivate you. You're already motivated. I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it. And he was the only one that taught how to do it. And then, I, and then like when it came to prospecting, for example, what is prospecting? And well, prospecting is finding new people. Okay, how do I find new people? And I think that's a big mystery for people today that want to sell a product, want to start a business. How do I find my customers? Yeah. How do I prospect? Yeah. So I had to break it all the way down to, okay, I get up in the morning. What do I do to go prospect? And yeah. back then it was, I'm going to go out and face-to-face, meet some people face-to-face, talk to them, ask them if they're open to other opportunities. I'm looking for some people to fill some positions in my firm. You know what I mean? Right. And anyway, so... 
I think that uh, something that we were able to do in our businesses is we were able to get people into that financial business and teach them exactly how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, I I think people are starving for that, you know? No doubt. Yeah. People are just starving for leadership in general in the world today. Someone who will stand up for what they believe in and not change because someone, the crowd says they should, you know? Right. What's popular. Exactly. I think I... I've always been that guy. I never really cared about what the crowd said. So I just, you know, just right. go my direction. I just looking to attract the kind of people that are inspired by our message, which I think is another important thing when it comes to life and business. And, and it's why I love like that thing you took Jersey to Lexi is at some point in life, you got to decide who do you want to be? What is your personal philosophy? And it's okay to change, Right. But at some point, you've got to decide who are you, Mm -hmm. right? What do you stand for? And what what are your values and what kind of character traits and and, and who do you want to be known as? And then once you make that decision, like Hector did, is becoming the guy who trained everybody in Primerica. And he did that, right? That's who he is. That's not who he said he was. That's who he was, right? Right. I think everybody else kind of gave him that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he knew who he was, right? Or is. And I think at the same time, once you decide who that is, a lot easier for you to make decisions that are going to help you in your life, yeah. right? Such as I think, Brandon, we talked about on episode one in our stories, you kind of knew how you wanted your life to be. Some of these examples that you'd see yep. in your life, a general I had a, framework, I had a, right? I had a good picture of it, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. of the examples. And then, yeah, so I think once you say it, unfortunately, most people don't have that. And so I think right. not only do they need help. Uh, uh, with the what to say, how to say it, you know, and whatever product they're going to sell or whatever it may be. But I, I think a lot of people need a group of people around them to help support the person that they want to become, like that character, right? So right. often in the world today, people are just like, whatever goes, whatever flavor of the month or whatever mm-hmm. thing people are following or what should you change your Instagram, you know, profile to now or whatever it may be, rather than just saying, no, the, the test of time right? Based on my character, I want to look back and go, man, I'm proud of the values. I think, you know, I I saw a post on Instagram today where someone says, um, I have no relation to the person that was posting on my social media previous to 2010. Right. (laughs) Right. How sad is that? Cause honestly, I look back at like my Twitter and stuff like that in 2010. I'm like, dang, this dude is a stud, you know, (laughs) but I'm proud because (laughs) I knew who I wanted to become. And maybe I didn't understand at that moment. I was so young, but I knew what I wanted to become. I knew what I wanted to look back on and see. And I think a lot of that helps people get to a place where they go, okay, this is who I am. This is my character, my integrity, my values. And I can take that and I can put that into a business and I can use that business to help me provide, have a great family life or whatever that may be that they desire. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to hear a little bit more from uh, our wives here because, uh, I, I think other people do too. Yeah. What's like that? who we are, where we came from or what? Yeah. I mean, I, I think exactly. I mean, uh, maybe Kelsey, I'd like to kind of know, um, I mean, what, what was it that you saw when you saw, I mean, you guys kind of, you were already dating prior to. Primerica. The Primerica Meeting business, you guys. Yeah. Right? But I mean, what did, what's all the stuff that you kind of saw and what, yeah, what's your story in all this? Where, how did you, you've always been not just supportive, but involved, but how did it start out? Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, we met when I was 17. I had just turned 17. He was 20, no, 19, about to turn 20. Um, but before I met Jeff, I was in another relationship and it just wasn't what I wanted. I was raised by a single mom and she was always super motivated. So I always had jobs and was wanting to make money. And my boyfriend at the time, like was lazy. And so I seriously would pray every night. I say I pray every night for Jeff because I would pray for a guy that was motivated and just like had goals and dreams and wanted to do big things. And then Jeff came knocking at my door. (laughs) Little did I know, right? Um, yeah, like I, I was that bright light when she opened the door. <laughs> you know, if we had a good sound effect right now, it'd be amazing. Whoa. I mean, you were rough around the edges, but I was okay. Is that what you with call it? it? Did he have a wife beater on? Because he's always wearing a wife beater. Probably, or Either just a wife over or no shirt. At no all. shirt, and that over his shoulders. He wanted to show me his like abs. Like, look at this, right? I work out. Right. Um, but yeah, so we dated for about a year, and it was a before Primerica. Mm-hmm. 
just right over around a year. Um, it was a rough year. I mean, we were so young and immature. And then my mom, he worked for my mom. And then they always had their ups and downs because he has opinions. And so it was rough. Um, and then we saw Primerica and I was like, yes, like we have to do this. I was working at Best Buy making a thousand dollars a month, um, full time. I had other part-time jobs as well, but in my, I don't know why I thought this way. Cause my mom was an entrepreneur, but I always thought if I want to make more money, I just have to work more hours, like mm-hmm. at a job, not I need to own a business. And so it wasn't until I met Jeff and he's like, no, 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 that's not how it works. You know, we need to own a business. And so when we saw Primerica, I just saw how much money you could make um, in the opportunity. And I was like, we have to do this. And we went to a meeting with you guys. And I still remember Jeff. I said, why aren't, why aren't you doing this? And he said, well, it looks a lot harder than it looks, or it is a lot harder than it looks. And I was like, I don't care how hard it is because I make a thousand dollars a month at Best Buy and I work my tail off. I think you were and, making like thirty grand a month. At yeah, the I think that month really you had good. made thirty grand a month, and then you had another RVP up there uh, that I think had made ten grand that month. And I had never heard of anybody making that kind of money. It was Jason Harper. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was yeah. just like, I don't care. Yeah. Like we need to figure out how to do this. So um, then once we got started. Then I backtracked. I was like, whoa, no, 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 no. I don't want to do this because you're always gone. You're always working. Like we, it's date night, right? Like we, he's all, I have appointments and. Well, because at that time too, it went from us being together every day. Cause I worked for her mom too. Yeah. And so, yeah, she would go work at her job, but then she'd get off her job. And then one of her part-time jobs was for her mom. So I would see her all the time, see her mm-hmm. at night on the weekends. And so we went from like hanging out all the time to starting business and then. I would be on appointments at night. And then on the weekends, I was on appointments. And then... Yeah, he'd get done like... And I was still in high school. So he would get done and he'd come over to my house and just be like, hey, like, you know, and then leave. And that was all I saw him, like maybe 20 minutes at the end of the night. Careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Right? No, exactly. (laughs) And so I would throw being young and immature little tantrums like, I don't like this. I don't want you doing this. Um, And he said, hey, listen, like I'm doing this with or without you. And I was like, what? (laughs) So, um, but I'm thankful for that because I was like, I better get on board or else I'm just going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the real story is we broke up, right? Yeah. We broke up and then, (laughs) and then I told Brandon that we broke up. Yeah. I told Brandon we broke up and Brandon's like, why? And I go, cause dude, she wouldn't support me. And I told her, Hey, if you can't help me make the money, you can't help me spend it. You know? And you told me that's not the way to handle it. But then you had a conversation with Lexi <laughs> and, and Lexi sent Kelsey flowers from me. Yeah. It was her birthday, right? It was yeah. my it birthday. Was her birthday. And you're, yeah. I'm like, what are you getting her? And you said, I'm not getting her anything. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. She was darling. She was so great. Like, Yes, I'm. We're looking at. I'm sending her flowers right now yep. from you. And that was it. And like you yeah. sent her flowers that day from me, and then Kelsey called me to say thank you. And then that kind of like, and then I'd have the conversation with Brandon, and Brandon's like, "Dude, you just need to ask for her help. Like, yes. just get her involved." And that, so I did, and that changed everything. Yeah, that was the thing. I just didn't understand, yeah. you know. And then once he made me understand, like, "Hey, I need your help. I want you to be at all the meetings, on the conference calls. I want you to be involved. I just." need that from you, that commitment, then I was like, okay. Well, I think you also said it earlier too, that uh, you you thought he was, he he did tell you this, but this isn't what I can almost guarantee. Maybe I'm assuming this, but when he said, I'm doing this with or without you, in his heart, he's doing it for you. Yeah. Right. And, and deep down, I think you both knew that. And, and uh, we used to tell people all the time, look, your wife might be a little bit frustrated that you're working a lot, but as long as you're communicating it and you know why, why you're doing it, she'll sleep better at night because she knows you're going to come through for her. You prayed for a hardworking man and then you get it. And then it's like, wait, but I don't like the other side of it. Right? Right. Yeah. yeah I think a lot of times because the answer to our prayers maybe look different than we want it yes. to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we pray for something and then we, we get it. It's like God delivers it to us on a platter and then it doesn't look like we expect it to. Yeah. Like, whoa, 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 wait. No, Which no, is our no. situation today. We're here where we're at today. We never imagined that we would be here, that we would have sold our business. Is what we asked for God for exactly. things in our lives, and God delivered them to us. And then here we are. 
and how awesome is it to look right? But sometimes it's hard, right? Sometimes it is. change. We're talking about the other day. I mean, he's, he's still delivering now. And it's like, are we recognizing that he's delivering? I, I don't all the time. I, mm-hmm. I need to like repent for that. Right? I'm, going, I'm, I'm missing the blessing sometimes. Going, he is giving like he's blessings. still carrying us. We're still being, and like, he like always she's has. Remind me, she yeah. goes, everything's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Will be, yep. you know, because like, it, it always right? has been, and we have to continue <laughs> to recognize that. Well, that. I think that too, like us going through those struggles early on in the business and, and, um, it, it also helped us learn a lot later on in our life, like how to deal with young couples. Mm-hmm. Right. So even yeah. though we struggled, we came through and then we would see that stuff happen with young couples and we would go, Oh, we got to build a relationship with them and help them go through these things. And, and then we would see their relationship thrive, you know, and for us early on, it was just because we had gone through this little struggle and it, yeah. mm-hmm. it was cool. You, you, you went through it, you knew how to get through it and you can bless other people's lives because of your struggles, right? The yeah. ones that listen to you actually benefit from that and get better themselves. Yeah. So then you get involved and then tell us what happened from there. Yeah, then just, you know, the business took off. <laughs> yeah, then it really got good. Real talent. Real talent. Um, yeah, so I just made a commitment. I had my work schedule around. I would never miss a meeting. I would be on everything. I'd go to every event. Um, I would prospect for Jeff, um, talk to people that way. And then... Was it the same for you guys it was for us where you'd get the names given to them uh-huh. and it, they were always good? Yeah. Every time. Oh, yeah. Always <laughs> Lexi would always get a name. I'd call it right away. They'd like join the business. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but also he called it right away. Right away. Yes. He yeah. did. Every time. They were the good ones. I'd, go, yeah. Yeah, I'd go find somebody. They were no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. I, I feel like that, especially with, with sales, prospecting, anything... I feel like women have a unique advantage that somehow they're able to connect with people so much better than men are. Men are just maybe less intimidating, more inviting. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I think it helps in business. Yeah. And and now you obviously moved from St. George to Boise. Boise. That had to be a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote this down. I wrote first you make your choices, then your choices make you. And when I look back on our life, it seemed like every choice was the right choice. Mm -hmm. Um, because in a lot of choices were scary. Like we moved to Boise. We had never lived together. Um, we both lived at home with our parents. We been in business for a year in prime America (laughs) And we move so far away from our family, what, nine hours away from everything we know um, to build a business. And we don't know anybody there. And where were you living when you first got there? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) We lived in a mother-in-law quarters. Um, It was horrible. (laughs) It was horrible, right? But Mattress on the floor. Mattress on the floor. Um, The door was like had a crack at the bottom of it like this. So bugs, and we live like under these trees, like it was right under the trees. So bugs would come in. And then when it hit summer, our air conditioning went out. (laughs) So, But we were paying what, 500 bucks a month. And we were, I I was still working at Best Buy when we moved up there uh, for a few months. And the money I made at Best Buy paid for our office rent. Mm -hmm. So we, we went up there and we found an office before we even found a place to live. And the only thing Jeff said is, we need an office. We need a place to work. Yeah. yeah. Like, if we don't have a business, we don't have anything else. Well, I think that's a mistake, too. A lot a lot of times, you know, in business, you see people put their personal life before their business. And I always say, look, our business is what pays for our life. Right. right. So we've got to feed the goose yeah. that lays that's, the gold That's where the payments go first. You pay your, if you got, if you've got a choice between your house payment, your office payment, you pay your office payment. Oh, your yeah, office. for yeah. sure. And all, the reason we used her Best Buy income is because they were the only people that wouldn't let us pay with credit cards. So we couldn't pay our officer on credit card. Everything else we could pay on credit card. Yeah. We and racked so, up like 20 grand in credit card. Yeah, it's like three months. Yeah. 20 grand in credit card debt. Racked it all up and then didn't have any more. <laughs> we didn't have any more. We couldn't put a dollar in gasoline. No, nope, we had no money left. And we ran out. We called all of our family for money because yeah. Jeff's license hadn't transferred. We had to transfer his no. license from Utah to Idaho. And it was taking so long. And we just, yep. well, it was like three months. And we still didn't have a license. Um, and so we called your mom, we called my mom, we called my dad for money, like just $500 and nobody would give us money. So I called my grandpa and he's like, well, I guess I can give you some social, my social security check. (laughs) Her grandpa is like super wealthy by the way. Right. I'm like, okay, you're really hurting. 
but, and I promised him, I said, I'll pay you back. We were expecting to get paid on a loan. And I said, I'll pay you back like in a week, I promise. So that $500 literally is what kept us. Yeah. When you yeah. say loan, get paid on a mortgage loan. So right. Yeah, we do yeah. mortgage at the time. Yeah. And yeah. You didn't need the license. You didn't need a license yes. to get paid on it. So, so and, and that just takes a process, right? So yeah. we'd been in Idaho long enough, finally had a loan closing. And that loan, actually, that guy ended up dying. It's sad. But that guy, his name is Mike, and his loan going through... Kept yeah, what? It paid us like twenty three hundred dollars, twenty four hundred bucks, twenty four hundred bucks. Yeah. Wow. Kept you going yeah. just long enough, and you could you could make money doing insurance sales or investment sales at the time. So right. what did you do? What could you do? And obviously loans, right? But what else were you doing? We were recruiting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I need that office to seat a hundred people. That's all I cared about. Yes. And, and and what was cool, I think, about that is um, you. Everybody in St. George and Utah knew you were moving up there, right? So you got some really good referrals, right? I know mm-hmm. Sherry Bone gave you the, the Smiths as a mm-hmm. referral. Mm-hmm. They led to Brian Klingholz and Todd yeah. Garcia and et cetera, et cetera, people, right? Yeah. That are mm-hmm. st- still our great friends mm-hmm. today. And it's pretty cool how all that kind of comes together when you're when you're willing to make the decision. You were the ones that had the guts to go. Right. And then your lives were blessed immensely. And then all those people blessed, your, blessed all of our lives. Yeah. Right. Hopefully vice versa. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What a story. Yeah, when you yeah, and then and then okay, and then I moved her again. You moved again, but before you did that, though, <laughs> yeah. what did you guys do in Boise for the next couple of years? To talk about what happened. Yeah, so I think the best thing that could have happened to us is that we couldn't make money. So the only thing we could do was recruit. Because mm-hmm. I look back and we didn't. I think a lot of people go into business and they're like, I have to make money, I have to make money. So you feel that. You feel that people are trying to make money versus us. We're like, we don't care about the money. We need to recruit you because we need to build a huge team. So when we get our license, we can start making money. So um, all of our original people that came when we recruited them, they're still around. They're still in the business. They're making big money. And you think about that, like there was like, what, our first like 10 people, there's probably four of them that are still in the business today. Um, right. But yeah, we, you can go over our track record. You, you set, <laughs> you set company records. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you license more people in a short period of time than anyone had ever done in the 30 plus year history of the company. Right. Yeah. The president yeah. of Primerica came and spoke. Yeah. In Boise, Idaho. Yeah. 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 Pretty dang cool. Well, yeah, it was fun. We, so. And you did all that. I was super. Like, yeah, she was yeah. the license. Yeah, she yeah. did all the licensing. Yeah. She, I once I realized that okay, recruit somebody and then get them licensed. We had a guy come and speak to us from the home office, and he said, "For every license you get, you'll make a thousand dollars a year. Right. So if you have a hundred licenses, you'll make a hundred grand a year." And it was like a bulb went off in my head. Like that's all I have to do is like, you know, you recruit them, I'll get them licensed, and I became obsessed with licensing. Um, yeah, we set the record. What was it for? Uh, three years in a row, we're number one in the company. Yeah, Some we, months we were licensing 27 people a month. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they've got to go take a test. They've got to go to class. How many and, guys in Boise? How many years? Uh, uh, four, four and a half. Yeah. So I, I can't remember. It was like even like two, two and a half years in. Yeah. That big event. You did that big event in that arena. You filled that yeah. arena. Yeah, we filled what up an arena. arena. Was that? Yeah, it, it was, was like, quest. Yeah, it was called the Quest Arena. I don't know what it's, it's different called now. now but yeah, it's it was downtown. Ho- it's a hockey arena in downtown. Yeah, we filled up the whole thing. It was cool. Way cool. Yeah, and what, what is cool about that story is we actually had uh, the president of the company coming to speak, yep. and the company was going public. Nobody knew about it. Mm-hmm. And since nobody knew the company was going public, they had these like last-minute details, and the president actually canceled. So we had already sold all these tickets to fill yes. up this arena. Couldn't have our guest speaker, so I called you, Brandon. I said, mm, Brandon? Like last minute. <laughs> yeah, last minute. I think two days. I'm like, yep. dude, I need you in Boise. I don't care what you have going on. <laughs> you have to be in Boise. Yep. And you became the guest speaker, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the arena was full. Nobody ever said one word. I never said, hey, our guest speaker isn't here. I just made it you, just randomly. No yeah. one ever said, hey, where's the guy on the ticket? Yeah. <laughs> oh how God. funny is that? Yeah. I don't think I look like Glenn. No, you don't look like Glenn at all. And Nobody you don't have a can. southern accent. Glenn's 20 years right. older. You know? <laughs> how funny is that? Made it work, man. Yeah. yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't worried about... And, and that's another thing. I, I, was, I was worried about getting people in front of the opportunity. If I could get people there to see what I saw, yeah. then I know that there's the, the odds are in my favor, right? Yep. It wasn't who was giving the message. A lot of times people are so worried about the specific person rather than sure. getting people in front of great information. Right? For sure. What an interesting time that was. You really think about with Primerica going, they're breaking away from Citigroup, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a crazy time. Mm-hmm. So, it was crazy. The world was uh, almost ending. It was like 2008. Eight. Yeah. yeah. 2008, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I remember we, uh, 
the reason why this is so crucial, what you guys were doing, what our team, our whole agency was just booming at that time, right? We had so many awesome just leaders yep. just kicking tail. Yep. And what, we were definitely one of the organizations in the company to help the company to be able to make that move to go public mm-hmm. because no obviously a company's got to be successful, right? And so good job to all the leaders uh, in our organization because everybody was just, we were just a tight mm-hmm. kick yeah. Ask, can I say that? Yeah. Well, you right. know what's cool too about that sure. is this is during the recession, man, when people yes. are mailing their no keys else. back to the bank. Yes. It and we didn't here. like even know really. I mean, we did, but not in our world. We our world it. was different. So it was crazy. We, we, we were at home office. They were recognizing us for uh, going over a million a year in income. Mm-hmm. And we were at home office and Citigroup was also at home office trying to figure out how to fire sell off the company. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to get rid of this company and move on. And John Addison comes in, CEO at the time, he's like, hey, we're so proud of you guys. Hey, just make sure you guys save your money. We were oblivious. Mm-hmm. We were just blowing and going. He was make sure you guys save your money. I'm like, okay, John, we will. Yep. But all that was happening during that time. Behind the scenes. Well, and that's usually a lot of times when something great is happening, there's a great leader behind the scenes. Um. Mm-hmm dealing with challenges yeah. that are allowing an opportunity to move forward. I mean, think about your guys' business. You were talking about going over a million. I mean, from the time you were going through those challenges, having a baby, which was Jersey, and then it's not like the next few were easy either, right? right? right. But then that was when you took your income from 300000 to a million right. through those times. So it was you had the greatest growth in your business also during a time which probably, I mean, I'm just guessing, but was probably some of the hardest emotionally challenge, challenging times of your lives, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. It, it, you're right. I mean, there, I think there's always opposition in all things, right? Oh, yeah. And it was almost like we uh, we got that much more focus and put the pedal down to, to do it. I think that's where the success goes to is people that during those times, right? Like when we were, we were focused, I remember telling our guys, pawn your television. Don't watch the right. TV. The news is lying. If it's on the news, it's too late. And this was before fake news, right? This was, <laughs> this, this was like an 08. Oh, yeah, yeah no, nobody even heard the word fake news, right? So I was telling people to pawn their TV, not read the news, not pay attention mm-hmm. to what was happening in the world. Because if they didn't believe it, if it wasn't real to them, then it probably wouldn't right. show up in their business. Yeah. And that's what happened, right? Yeah. That's uh, People's businesses exploded during this crazy time. And I think a, a lot of times it was because of the leadership. But behind the scenes, this stuff was happening with the company. For sure. Right. And so it takes a strong leader to continue selling a vision, telling people how great the future is going to be, looking for that bright spot, knowing that there's challenges right now. Yeah. And I think that's in a family, that's mm-hmm. in a business, that's in a country. I mean, whatever you're leading, whatever organization it is, if there's people following, you've got to be that person that is the beacon of light, right? Hey, look at the bright spot. People are just looking for that reassurance mm-hmm. that yeah. you walk into the room and they go, oh, I can be, I'm safe. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be that guy when I walk into the room, you know, like, like there's certain people just walk in and they command that that presence, that's right? It. Like Art Williams would walk in, yeah. you know, that's Art Williams, right? Or some of the great leaders in our company would walk in and you go, oh, we're, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's great, you yeah. know? And it's because the way, not just the way they carried themselves, but the way they were. Mm-hmm. Yes. They were, they were, right, solid leaders. Ready to stand up when a fight arrived. Yeah. Right? Yes. When it gets challenging is when they rise up. Right? Yeah. It's not, they're not scared. It's not like you're looking for one, but it's like if there is a challenge, if there is an obstacle, I'll be the first one too. They're always prepared because yeah. they're always improving. They're, they got a routine every day. You know, they're yeah. just always on their game, right? Yeah. And I think if we can... Aspire, continue to aspire to be those type of people in the world. We're we're a beacon for others too. You know? Yeah. yeah.